Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. You might have noticed something a little bit strange about these spawns. Indeed, we are on a free-for-all map, but this is a team game. Spawning on the southern section, representing the blue team, we have TZN's very own Claret, a very well-known player, top of the food chain as far as the bar leaderboards go, but accompanied right next to him is Flacca, or accompanying right next to him anyways, is Flacca. Another very, very skillful player, and across the seas and the straits and the many island bridges, we have Goopy as well. But that's it. What? That's it. Only three players on the southern team today versus a full team of eight on the northern section. So you might notice the way that this has been balanced. We have some silver, silver ranked heroes here, some high skill heroes going up against a whole bunch of noobs, the Joes, the, uh, the Schmoes, if you will. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. This is really, really interesting. We don't get to see this kind of imbalanced, balanced matchup Hardly ever. I mean, it's really hard to coordinate this kind of a game. Who decides what's fair and what's not? You just have to be willing to put it all to the wind and risk it all at the behest of your team in the uh, the chance that you might just have a fun time playing a game. And, well, I'll be damned if that isn't exactly what the Brightworks is all about, so I'm happy to see it. Representing the red team here, coming in at 29 true skill. I believe that's rank six, I want to say. Uh, somewhere around there. It's Sock Done Left. Starting out with that vehicle bay. Very, very popular on Mediterranean, the uh, map that we're looking at right here. Mediterranean, yeah. Version 1. And uh, pretty interesting. So there's a lot of... Well, okay, let's, let's talk about this first. There's, there's some uh, unwritten rules when you're doing an imbalanced match like this. One of which is uh, you don't just com-bomb the, uh, the team with less commanders right out the gate. Because obviously, like, you know, three of these players go drop commanders in the back line for the, uh, for the, the red team here. Suddenly, the green, the green team's not going to have anything. And, uh, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> they just have more commanders than you, so they can just afford to spare them. So that's kind of just the, uh, you know, the unspoken rule of an imbalanced match like this. There was a really popular cast, one of the first casts I think I ever saw of Beyond All Reason, uh, where it was it was called Pros vs. Joes. It's a really fun game. I oh, I can't remember who cast it, but I will uh, I will I will try to find a link to it and and put it down in the description down below. Um, anyways, that was uh, that was a similar match to this where we had some imbalance between the teams here, and I think that's really good. Let's talk about this map specifically. Mediterranean is a uh, Medi is it Mediterranean or Medi no it is Mediterranean. Okay. Uh, Mediterranean is a free-for-all map, and it's designed in such a way that it is sort of balanced, sort of imbalanced. You kind of want that kind of janky, partially, I guess I would call it jaggedy balance all over the place. Just so that uh, when you're when you're doing anything, there, you don't have these stagnant games. It just doesn't just turn into one side versus the other for an hour and a half. It turns into uh, one or two players or maybe three players versus each other for an hour and a half. <laughs> But this should be quite interesting, but uh, one of the key things about Mediterranean is you have to expand, right? And so you can see all of the constructors being built and sent out all over the place here. Nicely done, a little bit of aggression from Goopy, just what I would expect using a tick to harass down an early construction worker. Seems like maybe a minuscule, min a minuscule, minuscule kill here to go after the construction worker, but it actually really, really counts because uh, every construction worker you take down is just one less that they can expand with. Oh, oh no, tick went down 7% away from killing that constructor. It will live long enough to get back on its feet and uh, get back out there, start building again. Now you can see the pros already doing the same thing, building as much as possible. Ooh, a bunch of rovers do catch a constructor over here, but they do not capitalize on that. And there will be grunts coming out here from Claret in order to deal with all of those rovers. The rovers do go back for seconds, though, and I think eventually, uh, maybe, they will get <laughs> this constructor. Claret buying himself precious seconds to get enough forces out here to deal with this easily. Meanwhile, Goopy is pushing up the left-hand side. So we sort of divvied up this map left, middle, and uh, center here for the blue team. They're going to be trying to clean all of this up as efficiently as possible, holding onto their ground. You can see the pros also going for those constructors as quickly as possible, being sure to claim those metal extractors right off the bat, making sure that there is no metal wasted here on the uh, on the center of the map. 
One of the advantages of being a uh, smaller team is you get more metal per person, right? So these are high skilled players and they're going to be reaping the benefits of many, many more metal extractors per uh, each one of them. So they can probably do quite a bit more damage. Some pawns getting a nice little run by over here on Cobalt's base, taking down a couple of his metal extractors. That's quite annoying. He went right up to T2 after spending all of his money on a bunch of T1 solar panels. Yeesh. Not uh, not ideal, I would say. However, Cobalt's coming in at one true skill with one Chevron. Maybe a little bit new to the game here, so I cannot critique too harshly. Chevron, uh, not Chevron, Cobalt's, if you're watching this one. Just uh, do, do some quick math on the efficiency of these solar panels, and uh, I, I won't break it down for you here, but just do a, do a quick calculation for me, and uh, you'll figure out exactly why you should try to get into those advanced solar panels just about as quickly as you humanly can. Radar, that's a great idea. Another important thing to uh, to remember, thank you very much for reminding me there, Chronicilla, for uh, <laughs> the fact that the radar is so important on this map. So much ground to cover, it's really important to uh, predict your enemy's movements by putting up radar all over the place so you can actually see where they're posturing, what they're doing, what they're up to. The other thing is making sure you hold a reasonable amount of ground. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to overextend yourself. Your army collapses and suddenly you can't do anything. However, the red team has the luxury of having teammates that might be able to cover for you in the event that your army should collapse. It's a lot of grunts up north here, certainly enough to take down a couple of blitzes. Grunts actually do trade against blitzes fairly well, you just have to take a decent engagement. If the blitzes can jump on top of the grunts, it's game over for them. Uh, but if the grunts can manage to stay in formation and they can be running away from the blitzes at the same time, it's going to make it very difficult for the blitzes to hit their shots. Uh, and things are going to end up really, really nicely for the, the uh, grunts there. Wind is super, super powerful on this map. Tidal is not nearly as powerful. It's actually extremely inefficient here. Um, we're dipping below the efficiency thresholds of even... Well, we're, we're way below fusion reactors, but we might even be lower than solar panels at this point. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty rough. 15 power. Hold on, let me check the math on that really quickly. Really quickly. Um, 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 tidal generator. Ugh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, you can't build tidal power. There we go. 85, so uh, it would cost you 160-ish, 170 metal in order to get 30 output per second. Um, 100 and, wait, yeah, yeah, 160, 170, 170 for 30 metal per second versus a uh, solar panel, which is 150 for 20. Um, slightly, it's, it's, it's within ballpark of a solar panel. <laughs> I'm no human calculator, I can't do that math in my head, but uh, I, I, I can guess that it's about the same efficiency here. Some light laser turrets coming up, those are quite nice. For uh, Goopy here, gonna try and hold on against these uh, pawns that are slowly starting to claim this mainland, but a pawn army of his own is already coming up and online. Or it is already up and online, I should say. Pounder here, as well as some incisors, trying to get into a nice little fight. Pounder, of course, very powerful, but it uh, lacks range, that's its... That's his big drawback, because it cannot fire very far away. Um, and also, they are prone to swarming. I mean, if you can, yeah, if you can jump on top of it, a lone pounder will not stand against the horde, as much as it might enjoy it. Grunts flash down a tank real quick, using their light lasers. That's, uh, that's a double... Double entendre, I believe is the, the word for that. <laughs> wow, Goopy has already gotten himself out into the waters here. Seems early for that, but it is going to mean that the water players feel quite a bit more pressure. You would you would normally not feel that amount of pressure here. Uh, you would you would expect anyways, but they are going to be in a world of hurt if they don't address that naval problem soon. Bunch of constructors are caught here. Need to move those away as Flaka is going to uh, try and posture the tanks in such a way that he can save at least most of them. And indeed, I think he will. This is nicely done. That uh, riot tank is really the, the key to all of this, right? It can shut down those tanks, immobilize them for just long enough, and also do AoE damage. The other benefit there is that, of course, Flacca can eat up all that wreckage and funnel it back into his own economy. You can see that the pros are spending every single drop of metal that they can. Well, Clorette is a little high on the metal department right now, but probably looking to get into T2. Just went into an air lab, so it looks like he must have eaten up a uh, T1 bot lab at some point and is now thinking about going into that aerial space. Also, getting AA bots out is quite nice. It's a minor little move. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it can certainly do quite a lot of damage. It's a, uh, it, it can shut down very early scouts and that can blind your enemies so that their bombing runs are virtually ineffective. We've all seen how, uh, 
just about how well those bombing runs without scouts goes. <laughs> Bunch of destroyers are already out for Goopy, and they are headed towards the northern side of this map, looking to get into a proper fight. We've got a uh, construction boat here eating up a bunch of the metal. Meanwhile, there's a engagement on this side of the map as a lot of those grunts have been pushed back, as well as Corette's commander. So it is a little bit nicer here. The fact that you're on a team means that you can risk your commander a little bit. You can you can posture it in a uh, little bit more of an offensive way. Um, but still, you have to be very careful. I mean, the blue team has three commanders total. They're de they're desperate to uh, take whatever, whatever commander kills and resurrections they can get because they're still on a knife's edge as far as the, uh, the win condition for Beyond All Reason goes, which is, of course, to kill all your enemy commanders. A lot of unclaimed metal extractors back here. I'm kind of... Kind of uh, disappointed to see these haven't been claimed even faster here. There are some constructors working on it, but I think Flaka could have done a little bit better to try and claim those. Maybe they just assuming that those are goopies and uh, he shouldn't be worrying about it. But certainly by this point in the game, that should have been coordinated. And uh, I would I would expect a little bit more talking, a little bit a little bit more team team coordination here out of the pros. It's a nice little snipe there on that brute right there, managing to uh, or the the stout rather yes yeah the stout <laughs> managing to take down the brute getting a little uh tripped up in my words here the aggression up north has been repelled here and now that's a lot of metal lying on the bottom of the ocean floor dolphins destroyers uh anything else over here mostly just those two that's a that's as far as an effective composition needs to go for the uh for the armada faction mix in a couple of those anti-air skeeters and you're going to be in a really good position here Stout's trying to get a good engagement. Always difficult to push into those riot tanks, but they're more than happy to trade out for the uh, the uh, stouts here. Or the brutes, rather. Brutes and stouts. Fighting each other. Not sure why I'm having such a hard time getting those confused, but uh, <laughs> anyways. I saw recently a uh, render for the Heat Tiger was shown to me, that uh, the, the Odin character who has was also the one who showed me the, uh, the T2... Or the rather the T2 expanded sea ships, the uh, the Typhoon, the Maelstrom, and the uh, support ships, as well as the aircraft carriers, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, showed me a rendering for the the heat tank, getting a new a new skin on it. Looks like we're gonna finally lean into that, and I'm super excited. I've been saying forever that I think Cortex needs to lean into the uh, the heat theme a little bit more. Maybe even changing. I mean, certainly it'd be very easy to translate the uh, the incisor, the the Rascal, although I think the Rascal already fires a heat beam, now that I think about it. A little orange, orange laser. Um, but yeah, change all of those to be a heat beam. Basically, no laser weapons for the for the Cortex faction. They should they should all be heat beams. Um, by the way, what is the difference between a heat beam and a laser beam? <laughs> Somebody let me know, because uh, as far as I'm aware, those are the same thing. But, you know, maybe one just like, it's like a superheated convection oven or something. It just fires, fires, uh, like superheated air at you or something, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's different ways of accomplishing the same effect. Not quite sure. Nice little engagement here. These dolphins are more than happy to trade out against this uh, minuscule navy here, and actually none of them going down? Was that a perfect... Oh, there goes one right there. That was almost a perfect trade for these dolphins right here. Virtually perfect engagement. Doesn't really get better than that. Very, very nicely done. Fights all over the map here, trying to keep up with it all, but it is a little bit stressful. <laughs> These pros are so active all over the place. You get players that can micromanage multiple different types of armies, right? We have Goopy commanding a, uh, a land-based army, we ha as well as a navy. We have Flaka managing the commander up here, trying to posture and, and position, as well as tanks rolling around down south here. We have Claret, who is ecoing up, getting the, uh, the tech of the team up and running here. Uh, and then we have also those uh, Paralyzer drones that he had sent out and used to uh, shut down a whole lot of stuff all over the place. Do we have a dedicated Tekker for the red team? I really wouldn't have minded seeing it. I think it would have taken a little bit of coordination. Designate somebody. This would probably be a pretty good spot to tech up right here. Pretty pretty solid, considering the, uh, the start boxes here were about the northern section and the southern section. So I think that would have been a good spot. Alternatively, back here is a pretty good spot, although going for air is quite nice as well. He is up on T2, Chronicilla, that is. So uh, those T2 air, those T2 airplanes are going to shut down any of that T1 real quickly. I would love to see some EMP bombers out, though. You can imagine one EMP bomber strafing across this basically shuts down this army. It lets the yellow player get a good engagement. He eats up all that metal, transitions it into a T2 uh, laboratory, and the economy starts to boom after that. 
It's the kind of, uh, kind of wide-scale thinking that you have to get used to if you want to be playing in the back line, is uh, how do I... How do I leverage the, the tools and the resources available to me into a, a, a position that my teammates can benefit from? It's a lot of, it's a lot of balancing issues, because you also have to weigh that against the fact that, like, well, maybe uh, helping one teammate would be more valuable than helping another. Excellent D guns here by Goopy. I should shut up and talk about the game, shouldn't I? <laughs> Goopy here manages to D gun down most of the hounds for Sokta on the left. Just killer positioning with that commander, managing to get a really, really nice kill. Uh, these dolphins are also getting some great trades here, taking a bunch of 1v8 uh, fights here and shutting down one after another dolphin. You can see just how important that posturing is. You just, you, you take the right trades and suddenly your army performs magnificently more better. More, mag ugh, jeez. Early in the morning, need to wake up a little bit more, huh? <laughs> Start thinking about the words I'm saying first. Your army starts performing, performing way better than it uh, should have, than, than you would think its capability is. Yellow getting a little aggressive over here, manages to push through and break some of these defenses, even shutting down a uh, exploiter, that uh, armed metal extractor for the Cortex faction. They don't see the uh, stealthy extractor very often. That's the uh, the Armada sort of counterpart, I guess you could say. Um, it allows you to uh, it, it allows you to hide a metal extractor in plain sight. I feel like we don't see that one as often. It also functions as an EMP bomb, so if units run over it and, and destroy it, it lets out a little EMP burst. Pounders here doing a great job of mopping up this sturdy front line, but they are slowly going down. Yeah, it was a fairly even trade, but those T2 tanks are out and about here, and now they start to jump on top of the constructors. Not enough, however, to break through these armed exploiters. They are very strong. For T1 defenses, they're actually very, very sturdy. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy to see that we're on T2 back here. This is quite nice. Wouldn't even mind eating up this T1 lab. Uh, maybe make a couple of mine layers and just put some, uh, put some minefields out on the map. It's, it's one of those things that you don't think about in the beginning, but after just a little bit, eventually they can actually get some really, really nice value. They can, at the very least, dissuade the enemy from pushing into areas that otherwise would be quite inconvenient for you to hold. As we can see up here, very nicely done. Yeah, using these, uh, are these light mines? Uh, probably should switch to medium. Moving into T2, you really want to start thinking about medium and heavy mines. Medium mines are probably the most cost efficient. But, uh, light mines will certainly work too. They'll shut down any spam at the very least. Nano 282NY. Na nano... Nano 282... <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm supposed to read that. We'll just call you Nano. Please, please. Nano 282NY was my... My father. You can just call me Nano. Gonna be using the Navy here to push forward. There are some ducks out walking around on the bottom of the ocean floor here. But uh, they will be more than happy to shut down some of these destroyers. Destroyers also more than happy to shut down the ducks though. I guess both of these guys are just real happy to be fighting each other. Neither of them, neither of them real upset about this engagement. The ducks are meant to trade out efficiently against uh, dolphins and other stuff like that, but they're, they can do a decent amount of damage against these destroyers. I think eventually the destroyers take the win here as far as the uh, engagement goes, but it's such a slow fight that it doesn't really matter. Reinforcing units are going to pop out of Clorat's lab and uh, eventually going to shut down these battleships. Although not technically battleships, just destroyers. Nano is the Navy player, so I would expect definitely a tech transition here. Eventually, getting into T2 is difficult to do on Navy. Uh, going into it, went into a T2 air lab to get that advanced geothermal over here. Would have loved to see a T2 just handed off from a teammate, um, but certainly this is one option as well. Gotta eat up that T2 lab and turn it into a naval lab, though. I think that'll be great. Ducks, an excellent call here for uh, Clorat. Allows him the ability to sweep through the naval field while also maintaining a little bit of presence on land. At the very least, the uh, the, the threat of presence on land. <laughs> These are T2 medium tanks. These are the Tigers, and they fire pretty quick. They're a dangerous force to deal with, especially when the Janices start using their shots on those uh, more disposable T1 units. This is a trade that I have a feeling Flaka is happy to take basically any day of the week. Trading out these Tigers for a whole bunch of medium tanks is exactly what they're designed to do. And with the Resbots coming in here, they're going to even resurrect some of these tanks. That's interesting. I would have just expected him to uh, reclaim them and funnel them back into the war machine. But instead going to patch them back up on the front lines here, try and fold them back into the, uh, into the composition. 
very nicely done either way, getting that bot lab up. Something that's easy to neglect, but can certainly come back to bite you. Now the naval labs have fallen here for Goopy. Excellent little push here from Crab Scratch, who has shattered the naval compositions of Goopy and sort of rended this team in half. Yeah, this uh, this street being exposed here, this, uh, this uh, water path over here being cut in half could certainly cut the blue team in half and it could it could do a lot of damage it could really cause a uh, tremendous issue looks like claret has gone all the way up to an advanced fusion reactor or at least is uh trying to go all the way up to an advanced fusion reactor only sparing eight build turrets here to uh try and keep the eco drain down to a minimum very nicely done anti-nukes have been built all over the place or are being built all over the place nicely done good uh forethought there to make sure to include that that's definitely an easy way the pros could cheese you is just going for a nuclear launcher and devastating you with that sort of an effect wow claret managing so many different things all at once he's got twitchers roaming all over the map you can see that uh, nano is now moving the commander pretty far forward this is a ballsy play by nano i'm uh, i'm not so sure about this one there's plenty of grunts here that are going to try and swarm this commander and uh, it's not going to take too long for them to find this bad boy Oh, misses the D-gun. Gets the second one. Third one. Uh, there's already too many grunts here to, for this commander to handle, though. Not sure what Nano's position here was supposed to accomplish with that commander. Uh, maybe just hoping to clear up some of this uh, fortification over here. But by this point, Claret already has enough resources to start spamming grunts out of these T1 bot labs. And it's going to be funneling them all over the map. Res bots are definitely what we should be looking into here. We want to res as many commanders as possible. The blue team down to two commanders here, and it's what the uh, it's what the red team should be looking for. They should be trying to snipe those commanders wherever possible. We should definitely see more scouting just to try and find those wherever we can. Flacca's commander is just sitting in the base. Uh, could be prone to bombing, though. I don't see a tremendous amount of anti-air here. Would definitely love to see some bombers being used. Definitely a, uh, a little bit of a neglected field for this match right now. Those cataphracts are out. Those are very dangerous. They're a uh, they're a proper T3 unit. They can burn through the, the the armor of T1 units, T1 vehicles, all that good stuff relatively quickly. Also a scorpion battery coming up over here as well. I like that. Very good to see. Very powerful, of course. Capable of shutting down even some of those bulkier uh, T3 units here. These, these are just T1, I should clarify. It will go down. Kind of unfortunate that that was not... Uh, was not checked here. Advanced Geo will pop, but that will also destroy a whole lot of these naval forces. It's going to uh, shut down this aggression at least a little bit here. One more, one more Assault Frigate trying its very best to clean up some of those metal extractors. I think it might get a kill or two, um, but it will eventually be cleaned up. Meanwhile, the Ducks have started marching across the map. They're going to try and patch this hole. There's a leak here that Pumbaa is taking advantage of. I would actually love to see Pumbaa go up this back lane right here, set up a little bot lab, set up a little radar jammer, and start producing units in the back lane. Try and get the sandwich on these pros, really overwhelm their senses, make sure that they are multitasking all over the place, drain their APM, and eventually tax them to the very last. Claret working on those T3 units, just focusing on the hovercraft for now, but certainly could get some of those uh, Shiva or Catapults or even Karganeth out on the field just to uh, handle any rabble that come his way. <laughs> Can ducks fire omnidirectionally with their torpedo? I'm not sure. We'll have to pay attention where their torpedo comes out of. Do they spit it out? It's like a mouth-based torpedo. I think it is. Looks like they looks like they kind of spit it at you. Patuya, patuya. Oh, that one shot backwards though. Oh, okay, it is omnidirectional. Yeah, so they can shoot it any direction. Nice. Ducks very powerful. I feel like ducks might be a little bit, well, a lot more powerful <laughs> than the uh, uh, what is it called? The platypus, the uh, the armada counterpart for that one. Grandma was mixed in here. I wonder if that was a miscue or if we are intentionally producing stealth tanks without their cloaking field turned on. It's a bit of an odd choice here, but certainly not, uh, certainly not the, the most uncommon. <laughs> it's a mistake we see happen all the time. It's in the settings, you have to toggle which units get cloaked automatically and which ones don't. And uh, that's just one that we see neglected quite often. Looks like the uh, massive Twitcher ball here has set up a bunch of defenses. They're going to start setting up these uh, laser turrets, these twin guards all over the place, as well as some persecutors to make sure that that long-range artillery is shelling down upon anywhere that uh, it seems a little bit exposed. 
hound armies here trying to get a nice little engagement. They do catch a bunch of those res bots. That's quite that's quite nice. It's very expensive, uh, expensive catch there. Getting the fat boys is also quite nice as well. Those are very, very expensive. 1,400 metal for each one of those bad boys, and you really want to keep that thing alive. Unlike that, as that fat boy goes down, the pressure here is mounting as Goopy has to deal with multiple forces on multiple fronts here that are all pressuring at the same time. Very, very overwhelming. Difficult to deal with, especially if you don't have a composition that can handle multiple different areas at once. Uh, you have to split your units. You have to make sure that you have the right amount of units in the right areas at the right times. It's very, very tricky. Persecutors coming up here with crazy efficiency. Throwing those together with uh, just a couple of seconds. <laughs> Um, won't, won't stand much against the bulls, which are devastatingly powerful. Um, but it was, it was a nice thought. Unfortunately, a lot of metal went into that. Bulwark is coming up here, and that's much better. Starting up a Cerberus as well, that's quite nice. Oh, alright. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are our audio listeners, that Cerberus just plowed two of its shots directly into the Twitcher ball here. It took out about half of them. Um, reducing their number significantly here from from six or two sixteen from about I would say probably about thirty. That hurts. That hurts pretty bad. Obviously, those are somewhat disposable, and you can replace them, of course. But uh, you know, you don't want to. It's never never the right idea here. Metal extractors are being upgraded. Eco is coming up and online still in the back line here for Claret. Uh, although he's overflowing a lot of energy, so he can stand to definitely build a couple more energy converters. He's actually got two different eco points set up over here, kind of building eco all over the map, trying to distribute it, and I love to see it because it means that, you know, if you fall in one area, you're not exactly completely eliminated from the game, and it's certainly the sign of a very talented player to uh, think that far ahead in the match. Don't, uh, you, you know, plan for defeat, but don't, don't anticipate it. <laughs> Plan for success, plan for defeat, I don't know. Something something Sun Tzu, Art, art of War. <laughs> comb bomb. Uh, it's a little a little cheesy going for a comb bomb. It's a uh, it's kind of a BM move if you're if you're going for a comb bomb in a uh, three versus eight here. I didn't check one two three four five six seven eight nine. A three versus nine. Wow. I can't. Brightworks cannot count. Confirmed. I guess probably already knew that. These ducks over on this side of the map were neglected. Colorette's APM is taxed elsewhere, and so these submarines will walk by essentially for free. A couple of them went down, it looks like, but not very many of them. And once again, he's going to have to deal with a massive army. Massive navy, rather, pushing up that left-hand side. Again, the defenses that were set up over here do go down. That Cerberus, however, is still putting out a nice amount of firepower. This island is well guarded. There are also Shiva, one lurking in the water, and three of them sitting on the land. He's the uh, he's the wet brother, as they say. And it uh, looks like they're going to be on the move here, po posturing themselves a little bit differently now. But those Shiva really can turn this tide quite quickly. Do we have T3 here for anybody on the red team? Looks like T3 is coming up here for No Regards, who has uh, stopped producing out of the T2 lab, but is still producing some amphibious tanks out of the T1. Wouldn't mind seeing both of those labs eaten up to go into proper T2, but I would also love to see some anti-air trucks produced out of this T2 lab and spread around the map. You never know what your enemy is going to go for, and fortunately for the red team, uh, massive bombing run is not quite what it uh, would appear that Claret has in mind here. Instead, just going for the shuriken to shut down any early aggression. Shiva being a monstrous force on the front line here. Terrifying to come up against. Those uh, heavy plasma projectiles do so much damage, especially to clustered up units. Very, very powerful stuff. And the uh, the reclaim is going to be quite tasty as well. Vanishers are on the front line, and uh, those are sort of the sniper equivalent in the Cortex toolkit. Similar to the Pulsar, I guess I would say. Um, they fire a little less frequently, do a ton of damage. Big AoE splash of damage here. And they're, uh, they're quite good. They are quite good. You tear down those T T2 units pretty quickly here. You can see that a uh, couple of hits from those Banishers takes down a bull. Starlight's more than happy to uh, try and fire away through that super thick armor, but Starlight's also chain react here. As you can see, when this one explodes, it does tons of damage to everything around it. Suddenly, I think this fight has completely shifted in No Regret's favor here. Of course, no units are coming out because he went up to that T3, but now the Marauders are going to start storming the beaches, and we all know just how powerful those Marauders can be. 
Tons of T2 fighters coming out of Chronicilla, who is just continuing to try and build units in the back line. We've got Ticks bundling up over here. It looks like he doesn't realize yet that they can't uh, cross the water stream here, so these Ticks are just grouping up on this island. But uh, not not really going to be very effective here, unfortunately. If you switch the Hounds into Gauss mode, they have a really easy time firing up at these airships here. Much easier anyways than uh, they, they have trying to... Oh, there we go. Yep, switching into the Gauss mode there. Very nicely done. Yeah, they can they can they can actually hit their shots somewhat reliably against aircraft when they uh, when they move in this direction. But wow, that's a lot of snipers. You just watch half of that hound army get blasted away by a volley of fire from those snipers. The uh, the pawn welder sniper composition is just too much to handle, and it looks like Goopy is starting to crumble over here. Goopy without a major production facility either. Yeah, he starts up a T2 lab way too close to this oncoming push here. Um, no chance in hell that this thing's going to stay up, especially once the snipers start firing at it. The welder's also collapsing inwards here. You got to be careful because you never know what your teammate might be hiding in reserve here. But at least for now, uh, Goopy is pushed way beyond his means here. Suddenly, the collapsing forces from Sokka left do manage to overwhelm him. Quite nicely done, I would say. Shiva's going to be used to break this line of defense. Those uh, missiles they fire, quite powerful stuff. They can, uh, they can really tear apart some of those static defenses real quickly. As you can see with that uh, Pulsar going down there, the Grunt's also swarming through to distract a lot of the firepower here. Most of the heavy hitters aren't going to be dissuaded by those uh, little Grunt's, but it does mean that the Grunt's are going to get underneath and start firing away their little light lasers, chipping off little pieces of metal, leaving uh, tiny little holes in the, the metal plating. <laughs> and eventually, all that static defense does crumble here. Persecutors being constantly built on this front line, being sure to constantly expand the artillery fire. It's, uh, I've said it before, but when these pros start to play, it's, it, it sort of starts to look like the, uh, it sort of starts to look like the AI playing. Like, they just, they just build everywhere and haphazardly, and there's just so many units all the time, constantly. It's, it's just, it's hilarious to see, but it really does look like they are just robotic. They, they have way more hands than you would think they do, and they are, you know, maybe they're playing with foot pedals underneath as well. Trying to build bulwarks, trying to build persecutors, trying to build whatever they can here. Starlight's continuing to sweep forward here. Don't mind that whatsoever. I would love to see a radar and a jammer included in that composition. It's just going to make it a little bit more effective. This is dangerous, though. There are precious seconds before Sokdun left us sweep through the entire left-hand side of this map here. And uh, if, that doesn't, uh, if that doesn't get wrapped up, this is going to be a really, really huge pain. This area has been destroyed here. I wonder if Shiva are enough, though. We, we might have to enlighten this composition a little bit. What I'd really love to see is an Armada T3 facility. Uh, do we actually have an Armada player? We do. Yeah, it looks like Goopy went for Armada. But uh, Goopy has been kind of ravaged right now, so he does not really have a great foothold in this match. And uh, unfortunately, it means that uh, Armada commanders are in great, sp are in, are in, uh, great demand. <laughs> there are not many to spare. So like I said before, this, this lane being open here has sort of cleaved the blue team in half, where now the production from the T3 lab has to walk through the water and it's going to get ambushed by a whole bunch of submarines. Really, really hurts to get that super expensive T3 all scuffed up before it even makes land and can get to use its, uh, get to use its shiny big cannons. Of course you can build those, uh, those hover tanks, which can fire those depth charges and eventually shut down those submarines, but even those will... Well, I guess it won't be scuffed out by the submarines, but they can get they can get attacked by boats, of course. Uh, torpedo bombers, the actual solution we're going to go for. Now, torpedo bombers are quite derpy. They will oftentimes just drop their torpedoes even if they're going to hit land, which is, uh, you know, kind of unfortunate. But uh, they, they do their best, right? That's all we ask. They do their best. <laughs> Derping out here up against the Shiva. Submarines trying their very best, but uh, yeah, having a having a real hard time. I'm trying to fix the music here. Sometimes the music just turns off. I don't know why. I really enjoy listening to music. It gives my thoughts something to bounce off of. 
think he should be reclaiming a little bit more here. Yeah, Claret is uh, running a little bit low on metal, and I would love to see him reclaiming off the front lines here. These Persecutors are dangerous. They're certainly popping up and doing quite a lot of damage. But, uh, yeah, use these use these Twitchers to just eat up a whole bunch of this metal really quick. 40,000 metal, by the way. Uh, resurrecting instead. Okay, well, Claret has a plan here. Far be it for me to doubt the almighty Claret, but uh, going for going for some sort of a play here, just going to keep resurrecting the units on this front line. I guess just trying to patch up the T3 rather than having to uh, build a whole bunch more of it. But again, these submarines have already done so much damage here. Shutting down the Shiva production for a little while. It's helping stabilize the yellow and the orange player over here. Goopy has managed to get a bunch of anti-air bots underneath the, uh, the air wall somehow. That's hilarious, but it's super, super effective. Super annoying, too. Okay. Nicely done. Ah, uh, it's from a from a bot lab up here. Okay. Yeah, suddenly this uh, air wall has been cleft in twine here. As now all of, these, uh, all of these fighters slowly start going down to a bunch of these crossbows that are just shooting them out of the sky. Very nicely done. Fighters do tend to clump up when they uh, fly in these patterns like this, just because of the, you know, the way the timings work and everything with them leaving the, uh, leaving the station. So those crossbows can even use a little bit of their minuscule AOE effect to, uh, to shut a lot of that down. EMP bombers over here, followed up by regular bombers. <laughs> Interesting little composition there, but I quite like it. And that is quite a lot of the tech going down here for... Uh, quite a lot of tech going down here for uh, the, the blue player, the blue hero for red here. Do pop. Takes out a lot of those fighters as well, um, and some of those bombers, but certainly enough to uh, hinder Claret a little bit. But just goes to show how powerful it is to distribute your economy. He still has a couple of advanced fusion reactors over here, um, as well as all the production over here. So, distributed systems, people. Distributed systems. <laughs> this EMP bombing is actually really annoying. It, it does mean that the, uh, the push here is not very. Not very uh, deflectable, right? It, it means that the energy is in a bit of a crisis, especially when you manage to get the the main generator here for the uh, the green player. It essentially shuts off the uh, shuts off the energy tap, right? You can see that no units are being produced at this point. Leaves a wide opening for the red player to walk on in. Indeed, that's what he is more than happy to do. Stepping forward here. And that is going to be Goopy, essentially removed from this game. His uh, commander is still alive over here, oddly enough. Very important to keep this commander alive. It is one of three for the uh, for the blue team here. The capital ship was even built. Okay, I see you. Very nice. Capital ship here to try and ravage the shoreline, of course. I feel like my sound settings are a bit off today. I don't know. I'm not sure why, but the surround sound just doesn't sound the same. Alert. <laughs> yeah, they find the uh, secondary eco facility here for Claret, and they're going to start bombing it right to hell. Not a whole lot left after this explosion as those advanced fusion reactors go down. That is Goopy now down to only 4,000 energy per second off of an advanced fusion or an advanced geothermal plant over here. Just not prepared for the airstrike capabilities here, and uh, it's going to leave him devastated. Completely critical, beyond all reason. <laughs> this is uh, this is looking very dire for the blue team. I don't, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to pull off a win here. This is a nice little push over in this direction, but there's so many mines that these sheep are going to have to walk through. It's really annoying to have to continuously push through those, just knowing that you're taking a little chip of damage every single time you step on one of them. Uh, and there's just plenty of them to go. Helpo. Helpo indeed. Scorpion battery shutting down some of these marauders. That's very nice. Flacka building that static defense and holding the line. Goopy is, uh, yeah, not, not really interested in continuing this game. He's decided that it's time to resign. It looks like a nuke was launched. And then the anti-nuke deflected it. Very good foresight to uh, keep that anti-nuke up and running here. It looks like some damage will eventually be done by Blue over here, but I think it might just be a little too late. EMP bomber shutting down a lot of the production over here. A uh, final impulse bomber was able to sneak through over in this direction, and you can see it dropping those bombs over here. 
I really, really like the inclusion of those EMP bombers. It does let you shut down those uh, flak turrets and allow you to continue your bombing run really, really nicely. It actually works out very, very nicely. Yeah. Advanced Geo pops like a overcharged bulb and the uh, production facilities, the T1 production facilities for Colorat fall. With that down, he is down to only 2,000 power per second. There is uh, not a lot of way for him to spend his energy or spend his metal efficiently here. He's going for another fusion reactor for these bombers. They're not quite done. They're going to start heading across the map, looking for whatever they can to uh, continue ravaging. <laughs> Shivas took a wrong turn. I think if they had gone north here towards Naughty's base and had uh, taken down the, the yellow player here, they might have given them a little bit of room to try and push a bit further. But uh, looks like Clorette is a little bit tapped out here. Fully fully tapped, that is. The, the art of tapping a tree. Um, or in other words, the art of tapping a Clorette <laughs> of all APM. It looks like it only takes nine players to do it. Uh, I, you know, I'm a little, a little underwhelmed. I thought he could hold up against 14, but I guess, uh, I guess nine is the upper limit here, as uh, just the air and the ground and everything else is just too much to handle. <laughs> I'm really surprised Goopy has just been chilling up here. This is uh, interesting. Not sure, not sure why he hasn't been killed yet. I mean. Yeah, the production here is quite immense, but it's just not... It's, it's not going to save the backline, right? We, we talk about this a lot, or at least I talk about this a lot. You probably have normal conversations every day. I just talk to my computer screen and you lovely folks all the time. <laughs> uh, but what I like to talk about is the fact that you're never really interested in hitting your, uh, your enemy in the army, right? You're never trying to fight their army head on. You always want to try and fight their economy. You're, you, you know, you want to you kill their production centers, you want to kill their, uh, you want to kill their, their resource production. That's how you really want a game of bar. Antinuke gets targeted down here. Nicely done, that leaves Flacka completely exposed to nuclear bombardment. Florette says, we dead. As the uh, Razorbacks continue ravaging in the back line here. Advanced fusion reactors are not popped. Oh, not yet, anyways. Commander is spotted. Oh, the Razorbacks should definitely be trying to take out this uh, these advanced fusion reactors. They will get the regular fusion reactors. That's quite nice. Flacka's commander does cloak. He gets a D-gun here. Gets double D-gun. And manages to shut down those Razorbacks, surviving another instant. Holding out for one more second. This team reviving commanders wherever they can. Commander can't D-gun while in the water here. It's a tragedy. And down it goes for a second time. The blue team's still on two commanders. Looks like uh, Flacca has one over here. And uh, where where is the other? Oh, it's Goopy. <laughs> Goopy has decided to come down from his pedestal here. Uh, nope, back up he goes. <laughs> Not worth it whatsoever coming down from there. Still taking a lot of damage though. He says, nope, I think I will just go back to hiding. Can't blame him. Snipers are quite dangerous here though. Yeah, you can really see where this battle turned was over here on the left hand side when Goopy's side started to collapse from the, the naval pressure sweeping around the back here big nuke landing right there. Yeah, that's how they're, that's how they're gonna finish off Flacca's base. With the, uh, with the naval side pushing in in this direction and moving around, and then the, uh, addition of the, the, uh, pressure being applied on the, on the land from the red player, especially those snipers, those sharpshooters, so difficult to deal with. Um, yeah, that was, that was all she wrote here for the, uh, for the blue team. The pros could not hold against the Joes, and the, uh, in the end, it will appear that the, the APM imbalance was just too much to handle. Goopy, the uh, final commander here. Gonna try and 1v1, sock done left. The commander that ruined his base. He says, I challenge you. Although I feel like one of these sharpshooters might actually fire at him first. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> and with that, the blue team will collapse all of their buildings, exploding into rubble. 
as the uh, the red team manages to capture victory here. Very nicely done by the Joes, shutting down the sh or shutting down the uh, the pros here. Really would have loved to see the pros expanding, and I think oh, leaving those metal extractors unclaimed early on in the game seems like a little thing, but I think that might have been at least one of the root causes behind the uh, the failure for them to expand quite as quickly here. Also, an excellent job by Sokdun left, con continuing to expand exponentially here, where uh, you can see that this is where this is where Goopy was attacked by the red player here, um, and you can see that. Uh, Things, things just didn't scale quite as quickly here for the blue team rather than the uh, the red team. Anyway, this was uh, quite an interesting match. If you enjoy this sort of far, this sort of format, slipping into my southern accent there. If you enjoy this kind of format or uh, this type of game mode, let me know by uh, leaving a comment or a like or uh, you know whatever you feel like leaving down below here. Even if you disliked it, I'd love to hear that as well. Let me know down below, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.